Hello chess lovers, I have a very interesting game for you played by Hikaru Nakamura and Adu Oladapo. This game was played on the 27th of December in 1999, and on that day it had only passed 18 days since Nakamura became 12. Let's see how good he was at that time. Nakamura started with e4 and his opponent went for Sicilian defense c5, knight f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, e6, knight c3, a6, f4, knight c6, bishop e3, knight f6, queen f3, a very aggressive approach by white, queen c7, white castles queen side, bishop d7, g4, knight takes d4, and bishop takes d4. Instead of taking on d4 with a bishop, it's better to take with a rook. Well, this may seem somehow unusual, but the idea of taking on d4 with a rook is that after e5, white has this strong rook c4 move. And if a move like queen a5, white can simply take on e5, d takes e5, and now after g5, black is in trouble. Well, Retreating to g8 square looks not so good because after bishop h3, bishop takes, queen takes, look at these pieces. And black king is in danger and white pieces are well developed and can be a real threat for black king. And if in this position instead of knight g8, a move like knight g4 can be met with bishop h3. And again, this is of course problematic for black. If you take only three, then bishop takes d7 check. Again, this is good for white. But let's go back. We see bishop takes d4 in the game, bishop c6, bishop takes f6, g takes f6, f5, bishop e7, bishop c4, putting pressure on e6 square, b5, bishop b3 b4, knight e2, e5, knight g3, a5, king b1, a4, bishop c4, rook c8, b3, queen b7, queen e2, rook b8, rook e1, rook g8, h3, queen d7, queen d2, eyeing on h6 square, rook g5, blocking this diagonal with a rook, knight h5, queen b7. And here comes a very strong move by white. Can you find that move? Ready? In this position, Nakamura took on f6, sacrificing the knight. Black recaptured, and now comes queen takes d6. And it's very difficult to find a safe square for this bishop. For example, if you play bishop a8 in order to protect the pawn on e5, then white has this strong bishop a6 move, trying to deflect the queen from b7 square. And if queen a8, both protecting the rook and bishop, white can simply play f6, and black has to give up its bishop because there is a queen e7 checkmate threat. But let's go back. We see in this position bishop e7 instead of bishop h8. Queen takes e5, f6, queen e6, threatening checkmate on f7, rook g7, and now comes e5, trying to expose black's king. Bishop d7, and in this position Nakamura played another brilliant move. Can you find that move? Ready? In this position Nakamura sacrificed this time his queen on f6. Bishop took on f6, e takes f6 check, king f8, f takes g7 check, king takes g7, rook e7 check, king f6, rook takes d7, queen e4, g5 check, king takes g5, rook g1 check, and in this position black resigned. Well, if you play for example a move like 
king f4, then rook g5 is simply winning. You are losing your queen. And if king takes f5 in this position, then after rook f7 check, king e5, rook e7 check, king f5, rook f1 check, queen f4, rook f7 check, and black is losing its queen, and this is of course an easy win for white. That's why, as I have already mentioned, after rook g1 check, black resigned. A great victory by a 12-year-old chess player. Your comments and questions, please, and thanks for watching. Good luck.